This is the second roundup of products in the recent Oceanology exhibition uh, last week, and this looks at vehicles. What down there, folks? Actually, I've rarely seen so many new vehicles on show at the same time. Every time you just turn around a corner, you seem to see another one. No small stuff either. Let's talk about those. Well, at the back of the hall, near the SUT stand, there was an open space where you could have a look round at the FSMD Quasar. Oh, following the series of Toad System videos that we put out, we're going to do some on ROVs, uh, quite imminently. Anyway, next to it, next to the, the Quasar, there was a, an unmanned surface vehicle by X-Ocean. And this is used for applications where you want to get electronic sensors out to sea for survey, fisheries purposes. It's powered by a 2 kilowatt diesel generator and 640 watt solar panels that work in conjunction to keep the 5 kilowatt lithium battery charged. This powers electric thrusters. Travelling at 3 to 5 knots, it has an 18 day, what, 1500 nautical mile range. One thing I haven't seen for ages is the Ocean Aero submarine vessel. Um, the design's quite, changed quite a lot since I saw it last time. You'll remember it's powered mainly by a wing sail, and this can ret retract, and by pumping of 660 litres of seawater into the hull, the whole vessel can submerge. And this can be to avoid bad weather, avoid detection, or simply subsurface data gathering. Solar panels gather energy to power the sensors, observational systems, and auxiliary thrusters. Um, well, they've now added a ten antennas to the front and back of the vessel. There are two models, um, the S10, which is rated for 10 metres, but also the S200, uh, available this July, they said, and this can dive to oh, 200 metres. Remember, what's it, uh, Ocean Server? They, L3 bought Ocean Server last year. Well, anyway, the company just launched its new 300 meter rated IVA PW or Precision Workhorse. Um, it's got new, it's got safety features if you get stuck in the water. It's got a drop weight which can allow the vehicle to float up. In the middle of the vehicle, there's a nickel mineral hydride battery, and that gives 2,000 watt hours of power, um, which gives it. 40 miles, 40 nautical miles range. That's twice as powerful as the original version. OIS. Oceanology not only showcases new stuff, but even older st things that you probably should have seen before, but haven't. Now, for me, one such was OIS's modular ROV. The central park contains a high, an HD camera's either end of a bottle, housing control equipment, um, it has seven payload connectors, but either side of the of the central body, there are detachable thruster packs, so you can easily change the thruster configuration. Maybe you want it free swimming, maybe you want it to move against the ship hull or harbour wall. There's a battery pack giving the vehicle an operational time of four hours, although a surface powered option is available. Autonaut launched its new generation vehicle. It's got now available in three and a half meter and five meter version. They ruggedized, they ruggedized the earlier version to make it a bit stronger and added more capability. The new version can be launched from a ship. The rudder system's been redesigned to make it more resilient and maneuverable and there's additional space so uh, potentially more room for payload. Ort and Ort are looking to make the boat capable of operating in the Southern Ocean this winter. They've been speaking to universities about looking for solutions to icing, collision avoidance. Um, and the solar panels aren't going to be much use in winter months, so they need an alternative power source. Uh, on board power supply, energy harvesting, or even a fuel cell. Remus has launched its M38 compact one-man portable A-size AUV, designed for air deployment as well as being able to fit into a submarine. It's ostensibly for military applications, but you could always use you can still use it for um, for science. It has a top speed of 10 knots, and its normal survey speed is what, three to four knots. It can go six to eight hours, um, and it's rated for 300 meters. Eva Logics talked about using its Sonobot system in a novel AUV tracking function. 
As the AUV moves underwater, its position becomes increasingly uncertain unless it can connect with a point of known position, such as a beacon or a landmark. Well, the idea is to sail the Sonobot directly above the AUV, and the Sonobot can receive satellite signals or wireless signals for position fixing and carry out two-way communication with the AUV. ISE is currently looking at a deep water version uh, to, of its AUV um, Explorer to work in 6,000 metres of water with maybe two, maybe 24 hour endurance. Oh, Forum announced a soft launch of its XLE ROV. Um, it'll be the first of five all electric ROVs that'll be developed over the next four to five years. There'll be a slightly smaller version, which will be about the size of the Mojave, and then three more vehicles bridging the gap up to the hydraulic XLXC. As soon as they introduce a new vehicle, they'll start to phase out the old sub-Atlantic equivalent. Sea Raptor, ooh, um, Teledyne's AUV, is normally characterised by the small, modular, hand-portable Gavia. It's a bit of a surprise to see the latest version, uh, the Sea Raptor, can work in deep waters, maybe 3,000 to 6,000 metres. At the show, Saab CI announced it had provided additional Falcon ROV to STR's rental pool. But one thing I hadn't seen before was their electric manipulator arm. You, could prob you may remember the University of Girona developed the tri-hulled Girona 500, but more recently it's been promoting its Girona 200. I haven't really been keeping in touch with what Graltech have been up to, so the latest version of their AUV really caught me a bit by surprise. The old AUV had a main rear thruster, well like most AUVs, but had hydro jets in the bow for steering. And this would be this is really useful for things like the internal inspection of subsea tunnels. But the latest version have, has had these replaced by horizontal and vertical thrusters. The vehicles are hybrid between the, an AUV and a glider. So in the front section, there's a chamber in which water can be moved to change buoyancy. And it's also possible to move internal mass forward within the AUV to increase the pitch. So it'll then dive diagonally down. To make it rise, um, just do the opposite. Eject water so it becomes positive and move the mass backwards and it'll start moving upwards. In 2009, the designers started to add a fibre optic lead, well not a power lead, to turn it into an ROV as well. So, look out for videos on ROVs, but if you want to know more about subsea engineering, read UT2 and UT3, the magazine and online magazine of the Society for Underwater Technology.